Hello and welcome back to Linear Algebra, the video course where we talk a lot about vectors, matrices and so on. And in today's part 57, we continue our discussion about eigenvalues and eigenvectors of matrices. In particular, today's topic will be about triangular matrices and block matrices. And it turns out that the spectrum, the set of eigenvalues, can easily be calculated for these matrices. However, before we go into the details, I first want to thank all the nice people who support the channel on Steady, on Patreon, here on YouTube or by other means. Indeed, as a supporter you get a lot of benefits, just check the link in the description to see my webpage. Ok, then I would say, without further ado, let's immediately start with the proposition of today. And there we will have three parts and they are all about the spectrum of a matrix. And you already know, the spectrum only makes sense for square matrices. Therefore, let's start here with a diagonal matrix. So we have an n times n matrix and please recall, the spectrum is the set of all eigenvalues of this matrix. Moreover, you also know that an eigenvector for a matrix is just a vector for which the matrix does not change the direction, but just the scaling factor. And the scaling factors are exactly the eigenvalues of the matrix. Therefore, for a diagonal matrix, it's not hard to see at all that the eigenvalues are on the diagonal. Indeed, the canonical unit vectors are simply the corresponding eigenvectors. And then the scaling factors come immediately out with the entries on the diagonal. Hence, we already know the whole spectrum of the matrix. That's one possibility to argue here, but of course you can also use what we already know and use the characteristic polynomial. And then you know a lambda is in the spectrum of A if it's a zero of the characteristic polynomial. In other words, here you just have to know how to calculate a determinant of a diagonal matrix. And then you also get the result immediately. However, then you also know that you could extend this fact to triangular matrices. In fact, there we already know, adding non-zero elements here will not change the determinant at all. However, we need the triangular structure, so we need zeros below the diagonal. But then in this case, you can remember the important fact, the eigenvalues of a triangular matrix are written on the diagonal. And moreover, also the algebraic multiplicity can be seen immediately. Ok, but maybe that's something we can discuss in the example below. First, I want to show you that we can generalize this fact even to block matrices. This you might already know from our discussion of determinants, some matrices can be decomposed into sub-matrices. However, important again is that in this block form we have a triangular structure. In other words, we have the zero matrix here in the corner. Now, in addition, another crucial thing here is that the two sub-matrices B and D are written as square matrices. We don't need to have the same size for them, but both should be square matrices. Otherwise, the equation we write down now would not make sense. Because now we say we calculate the spectrum of B and the spectrum of D and then form the union. And then what we get is the spectrum of this block matrix there. Also, this is not hard to see if you know the corresponding fact for determinants. And I can also tell you this was not so long ago, this was part 49. Moreover, also in this part we proved that the determinant does not change under the transpose. And of course, with the characteristic polynomial, this immediately translates to the spectrum of the matrix. Hence, the set of eigenvalues of AT is the same as the set of eigenvalues of A. And of course, this nice fact immediately implies that the two properties from above also hold for lower triangular matrices. In other words, in the case that the zeros are not below the diagonal, but above the diagonal. And that's something we now present in examples. And as often, it's always good to start with a simple one. There I want to ask about the spectrum of a 4 times 4 matrix. And then here for this example it's not hard to see that we have a triangular form. 
Hence, the elements on the diagonal form the set of eigenvalues. And it's exactly given by 1, 2, 3. However, 2 occurs two times, hence the algebraic multiplicity of 2 is also 2. And of course, the algebraic multiplicity of the other ones is simply 1. So important to remember here is, this is not hard to do, because the characteristic polynomial immediately gives us this result. However, please note, this is only for the algebraic multiplicity, because we don't know anything here about the geometric multiplicity. In fact, this might be much harder to show. Okay, now for the next example, let's go bigger. Let's go 6 times 6. So here we have a lot of entries, but you also see we have a lot of zeros involved as well. However, unfortunately, it's not a triangular matrix again. But from before, we know another trick. If we can form a block matrix, we are also fine. And indeed, this is correct. We have zeros here in this corner and they allow us to make two square matrices on the diagonal. Therefore, we don't have to calculate with the whole matrix because we can immediately split it up. Hence, we have the spectrum of the one matrix, union spectrum of the other matrix. So there you see, this is the big advantage if we can find such a block form. And now you should immediately recognize that for the first matrix here, we have a triangular matrix again. Hence, for this, the spectrum is already solved. However, now the question is, what can we do with the other one, because it's not a triangular matrix. It's really close to that, but not quite. However, with the zeros in the top right corner, we see the block form again. Therefore, we can reduce this 4 times 4 matrix again. So we have union spectrum of the first matrix, union spectrum of the second matrix. And there, the nice thing to see is that we have triangular matrices again. So in conclusion, now we are ready to write down the whole spectrum as a set. And in addition, we also see that the eigenvalue 1 has algebraic multiplicity of 2. Hence, in the end, we could order the eigenvalues and also write down the algebraic multiplicities. But again, I can tell you, we don't know anything about the geometric multiplicities yet. This is something we will definitely discuss in the next videos. However, first I wanted to show you these properties and the examples to show that sometimes calculating eigenvalues can be very simple. If you can recognize a very nice form in the matrix, you can save a lot of time. However, still calculating the eigenvectors can be much more complicated. Okay, then let's talk about that in the next videos. So I really hope I see you there and have a nice day. Bye bye.